Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Oxygen Not Included. I have to admit, I've been playing the game a couple of hours in between the episodes to sort out a few more things. And I haven't come extremely far, but I wanted to take care of our power issues. If you remember, this is the contraption we've built in the previous episode and it helped us to gain a little bit more power. However, it's not that much power, since a lot of the power is immediately going into other machines such as the aqua tuner and the mechanized door. However, since this contraption is giving us a net positive of power, it, it cannot harm, we don't have to take care of it any longer. So I decided to redesign it a little bit and build it in a much more grandiose fashion. And this is what we can see right here. I'm not completely finished yet, but with this design I'm hoping to get everything out of the system that I want. I'm still sweeping up the materials and pumping out the gases, so it's not quite ready yet and we also need to craft more steel. If you noticed, the duplicants are actually coming inside of the contraption right here where everything is gonna be a vacuum except the rooms that we're gonna fill up with hydrogen and steam. And we're also gonna build ourselves an access into the magma biome so we can actually dig that stuff up or collect it and bring it over here. So this is gonna be my magma chamber with all the mechanized doors and the necessary sensors to get this going. If this works, we can of course copy it all over the place, but I thought at some point I have to stop. Maybe we could have done actually one more, thinking about it. Huh, yeah, we definitely have the space for one more turbine. I'm actually kind of intrigued about that possibility. <laughs> what do you say? Should we do it? I mean, that would delay things a little bit. I've already almost pumped out everything. Ah, whatever. Let's uh, freaking do it. I'm gonna actually build a couple of tiles here so I don't have to pump out everything once again. So in the end, we're gonna have seven steam engines. I like it. Now, before I dive too deep into this project, there is actually a natural gas geyser that I've uh, discovered right here. We could use that natural gas after cooling it down somewhat. It comes out at 150 degrees. I mean, it's just 382 grams per second. It's not that much of a gain. However, we could easily cool it down and just bring the natural gas over here into our system, feeding our three generators that currently have nothing to do. We are doing much better in terms of petroleum now that we are pumping out the stuff again, but whenever I run out of petroleum, then the entirety of the system is collapsing. Even these steam turbines are gonna overheat because the aqua tuner cannot keep up anymore. So I have to ensure that we have a really good power system that is just producing the power that we constantly need anyways and don't need to store in batteries. So in the end, all of these generators should only be responsible to fill up the batteries and the steam turbines are going to be responsible to keep everything powered that requires power constantly. The reason I'm tuning in here specifically is because I added another duplicant, Camille, who is going to be a rancher. So first things first, I want to make sure she is definitely not in the same schedule as my first rancher. Oh, that reminds me, I might want to train her up first. So she's going into the training schedule and Toby actually finished his training by now. So what Toby could do is move into the second schedule here and he's just going to take over everyday tasks. I also want to make sure Toby can actually get out of here. So no special permissions for you. You can do whatever you want. However, Camille is not allowed outside. What she can do is go into this room in order to train some. So Toby is now officially part of the pack, he just requires one more skill point in order to get into the rocket tree. By the way, that is something I want to prepare today as well. On the top here, I also rearranged a few things. I added a couple more of these bunker doors so we can farm up the regolith a little bit more efficiently. At the moment, I'm still bringing it over manually, but I think that's another thing we want to change today. However, I kind of need to estimate how we are going to set up our space scanners. So once we have the power stabilized, we're definitely going to take care of that. Is there another thing? Yeah, of course, uh, you've already seen it probably, but I exchanged my coal generators with petroleum generators, so I don't think we are dependent on the coal any longer and can use it for more reasonable things. This also means we could probably exchange one of our hatch farms with a totally different creature in order to farm another material. Yeah, I guess at this point I'm gonna need a little more time in order to craft the steel. There are a couple of steel doors that I still need to do. Uh, let's actually check out our steel production here. At the moment we are still crafting. It sometimes takes a while because I gave the cooling loop priority, but usually at around 190 we're actually going back in and then the output pipe 
can be emptied as well. We're also not having any troubles with the oxygen anymore and you can see everything that's going into this direction is actually oxygen that we are storing. Currently I have uh, these many tiles and in each tile there is... Uh, let's actually see oxygen. There is about 350 kilograms of oxygen. So we already accumulated quite a bit in order to use for another project. The last thing I want to mention is uh, we possibly reached the capacity of this. And it's not because we cannot cool down the hydrogen more, but I feel like we are pretty much stuck at this number at the moment. And the reason for that is, oh man, something I'm really not a fan of. But these igneous rock pipes are just not holding up. Look at this. We are coming out at around 200 degrees or minus 200 degrees. But by the time we're going down here, we are losing more and more of that coolness. And by the time we actually arrive at the end of the line, we lost over 20 degrees. Now, mathematically speaking, with these four regulators, we are still cooling it down. But dude, I'm not so sure about this anymore. We might have to use ceramic for this. It's just I don't have that much material at the moment. Another great suggestion you gave me is actually to place in metal tiles right here instead of using the cooling loop at all. So the cooling loop I'm using here is basically rendered useless at the moment. I'm still keeping it in uh, temporarily until this contraption goes out of commission or we do any other change that influences this. But at the moment the cooling comes from the water here and as long as it's still water we're gonna have this room effectively cooled down. It's never gonna go above 100 degrees. This way we can even put in more heat into the system and therefore get more steam out of it. I mean, this steam turbine has been pretty much useless, but we are using the system in order to get more water and also to cool down the regolith. That is the main goal here and, you know, just as a byproduct, eventually this pool of water is gonna vaporize entirely. Good, with that out of the way, let me go ahead and finish this power system. Once we have this done, I believe we should be good to uh, take on any other projects because we have no more sorrows about the power. Alrighty, we are back and I progressed a little bit in my planning of this build and I think I now know what I want to do. I reduced the amount of doors first and foremost and decided to add one entire layer of metal tiles. The reason for that is I don't want to waste too much power using the doors. I noticed that this door is actually active quite often. Maybe we want to steer it with two sensors so it's kind of in a range. I added the power transformer right here on the right side of the room and then we have an actual liquid vent to add more water and therefore steam to the room. What I prepared here is an area in order to smelt glass. In the refinement tab we have the glass forge. We can also build it out of various materials. I'm gonna use obsidian just for the sake of it and we're actually gonna have that right there. Once again this entire area is gonna be a vacuum and therefore we need a way to cool down the glass forge. The glass forge will actually take sand and it will output molten glass at around 1700 degrees. So it's gonna be a pretty toasty endeavor. So I thought what we might be able to do is use a mesh tile right here and then we're also gonna use a liquid vent in order to supply water and therefore cooling. I'm actually gonna add that here on the second tile and we're also gonna need a sensor. Namely what we want is to measure the temperature and if I'm not mistaken, let me actually check out my water. The water that is coming down at the moment is already pretty hot. Whoa. <laughs> Now actually thinking about it, we are going to make a cooling loop for all the steam turbines, right? And we're gonna have our aqua tuners right here and maybe a couple more steam turbines on the top to take care of that. But we are going to cool down the liquid enough so that we could run the cooling loop through this area as well and the lower area as well that I actually want to fill up with water right there. So essentially we want to take some insulated piping and we are going to, hmm, let me see, we're actually going to drop the molten glass right here. It is going to be dropped into a large pool of water that every now and then we're going to recycle through our cooling system. Or we could just cool it down with pipes, that would be even easier. Let's maybe first finish the cooling loop. We're going to need some iron piping right there, two for each steam engine. And then we're simply going to go ahead and add a couple of bridges in order to complete these loops. But it should be enough to have two of these iron pipes. And if I'm not mistaken yet, behind each of the steam turbines I have a temp shift plate. So cooling, going around, cooling steam engines, and then we are going to cool this machine. So let me actually move down here and over there. We're going to do the same exact thing, some radiant pipes right here, two for the entire machine and connect that with a pipe so we then can finish the cooling loops. So what we want to do is go down at this point, 
we are then going to cool down the water that is going to be in here. And of course, the water is going to lower the temperature of the molten glass so that we can use it to build stuff. The reason this is actually working and not producing any steam is because, of course, we are going to cool down the water. But also, water has a heat capacity of 4, while the molten glass only has 0.2 or so. And we can dump in a lot of molten glass before we even start to heat up the water. You know what? Let me go all the way down and then move over here. I could potentially build that. Yeah, I can take apart one block there. And so I have my cooling loop completed. These pipes right here are actually meant to bring in new water uh, right at this point. But I just realized I might want to do that in the insulated tile instead of the steam room, of course. Otherwise, we're going to have another problem. Now, by the way, I also noticed it is already turn 700 and we are not extremely far in the game, but I just do enjoy the game and I love to experiment around with it, do some testing. All right, then I think at this point we are safe to introduce the water. I'm going to drop a little bit of liquid right here. I'm just going to use normal water. And we're also temporarily going to hijack this vent in order to introduce the water into this place. I want to fill up this entire basin. But we also want to make sure the water is only going where we really want it. We could also already introduce some of it into our cooling loop. Now, this is all made out of granite pipes. This is a little bit dangerous. Well, it's not that hot in here. Mm, you know what? I think the safer option is just to continue the water flow right there. So we can take apart this slightly dangerous construction. I don't want any steam where it's not necessary. Good. I think we're ready to do this. 94 degrees. Hopefully I'm not gonna regret this. Water ahoy. There we go. Okay, so far so good. Now I just need to stop it in time before we overfill the basin. And maybe just for good measures, we're also gonna introduce a couple of temp shift plates. As I built this entire place, obviously a lot of the materials were laying on the floor and just sweeping them up wasn't good enough. What I actually did is placed an automatic dispenser here and I just let them all collect the items. And I'm gonna do the same thing right now, collect everything and then I'm gonna do a little sweep command right here so we get it to the next stage and from here it's gonna be easy to transport the materials back eventually when we need them. But I don't really want to risk having them here. It's actually also dangerous at this place because as soon as we start collecting the lava, uh, there is a possibility for a dupe to be called to dinner. And if they are on this ladder at that time, they're going to drop the bottle of lava and then it's going to heat up the other items. Maybe smelting them, vaporizing them, it could be a mess. So I rather see these items swept up, to be honest. Okay, we are at 600 kilograms here. I think we can stop it. Now let's just cut it off at this point and let the rest of the water still flow in. You know, with all these changes, I don't even think we're gonna need this water supply. I'm eventually gonna cut this off. So what we're gonna do instead is maybe set up another vent here that is gonna be responsible to take the initial liquid. So maybe a bridge right there leading a pipe and then the rest of this we can take apart again. Less cluttered, I like it. And that's how plants evolve and throw everything over that you just built. Let's maybe continue by setting up our steam turbines on the top here. Uh, we're also going to have two of them. Yeah, sure. Let's have the second one right there. So we can have our ladder in the center for the time being. Guys, we're actually almost done. Everything is built. There's almost no atmosphere left. What we have to do is fill this room here up with hydrogen. Fill this room up with hydrogen. So maybe that is something we could uh, plan ahead already. Let's do that. We have the hydrogen currently coming from over here. I think we should be able to just continue that. Okay, there we go. We have about 40 kilograms of water in the joint. That means we can go ahead and remove this again. Uh, actually, I'm just going to leave it there in case we need it. Come on, it's just a couple of micrograms. Hold on, I almost forgot about the output of the steam turbine. And of course, we also want to lead the cooling loop through it. So I guess we're going to take a little detour right there. And we're coming back with just insulated pipes and right here we can send them through the aqua tuners. So some more radiant pipes like so. Bridge in one direction, bridge into the other direction and then go ahead and send them through the first sensor before the first aqua tuner. But I need to wait for this pump to finish finally. Also if we want to stay consistent we need some temp shift plates. Just to clarify, all of the mechanized doors are out of steel. This is a tungsten metal tile and the rest are iron. I also used steel wires wherever we have metal tiles or the steel door and the rest is made out of lead. 
Same thing for the power, wherever it is on a steel door, I used steel wires and the rest is lead, going through the insulated tiles. The way we're gonna grab the lava is with an obsidian pitcher pump. I think this will be able to withstand the heat. And I guess we can get things started right here. This shouldn't be a pro- No, actually I cannot reach that then. Let me build this right here, get rid of that. Everything on the floor here, by the way, I think is lost. Some of that has a temperature of over a thousand degrees. So everything that's dropping down here, I'm just gonna let drop into the lava. It's lost. So my pitcher pump is gonna go right here. I wanna make sure it's out of obsidian. Let's check the properties here. 2700 degrees, so that's gonna be no problem. We also make the ladders out of obsidian, just in case they touch the lava at some point. And I know this contraption is a crazy endeavor, that's why it, it actually takes me so long. But I thought it is an opportune moment because the base is running smoothly. I don't have to take care of anything at this point except maybe some overflow. You know, and every now and then I have to open up the doors, farm some regolith if I want to. This is not the most important part at the moment. I just want to get the power station finished before we tend to the space project in the next episode. Guys, we're almost done. There's just so little atmosphere left. It's just the way I set up the room, of course, it does take a while. But, you know, I have high hopes for this contraption. Looks like it's gonna take forever to pump out the entire room. So I thought we're gonna do some regolith farming. That's all for me. Thank you very much. Come on, come on. Three micrograms. Just go away. Yeah, if you get the gases low enough, at some point they're just gonna disappear into nothingness. But we did it guys, we now have a vacuum, it's time to introduce the aqua tuners and the hydrogen. Thinking about it, I'm going to need a wall right here and therefore the steam turbine needs to move one over. That's a little bit unfortunate. This had far greater consequences than I could have anticipated, but I moved everything over. Temp shift plate, pipes, everything. Okay then, finally, let's place the aqua tuners. Uh, gold amalgam unfortunately is just not enough, so we're gonna have to go with the steel. I would like to set up three aqua tuners, just like that. Actually, let's go ahead and move them over one, so something like that. And we're gonna do our usual setup. There's gonna be a thermo sensor. If the liquid is too hot, it's going through the aqua tuner to the next thermo sensor and so on and so forth until it loops back out at the end. If the liquid is cool enough already, we are gonna go up, bridge over, and then we are just gonna bypass every aqua tuner. Because if it's cold enough at the first aqua tuner, it's also cold enough for the others. So same thing here, coming out, coming out right there. And we wanna go ahead, add a couple of bridges, so the water flows into the right direction. And then at the end here, we're gonna join up with the loop, just like that. The loop is then going back up and all the way around again. We also don't have enough materials. I'm gonna craft a little bit more iron and a little bit more steel. Since we have a vacuum, and only because of that, we now should be able to take care of the lava. So I wanna make sure this is swept up here. Nothing should be in the way. And what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna continue the obsidian ladder. I really wanna prevent them from using this ladder and then drop a bucket of lava on all my materials. That would be the worst thing that could happen. But then at this point, I think we should be ready to open this up. Let's freaking do it. Uh, let's save the game. I'm just gonna open up these six tiles, maybe continue the ladder. Uh, actually, that's not necessary. We are gonna continue the ladder once we need to move the pitcher pump. Magma ahoy! It happened. We have access to lava. A lot of it. Ah, this is really good. And the pitcher pump actually keeps its temperature. That means we can go ahead and assign this to dump some lava into it. For now I'm gonna do this manually, but of course eventually we'll wanna pump in the magma. Let's add a couple of liquid pipe thermo sensors, and we are also gonna need the automation. Oh, come on game. It's starting to lag at some points, I have to admit. For each sensor, if the water is above 15 degrees, we wanna go ahead and send it through the aqua tuner. But in the beginning, I actually wanna reverse that effect so I can fill up the loop without the aqua tuners going off just yet. The loop I'm gonna fill up through this pipe right here that is also hooked up to my main water line. Uh, uh, there we go, Turner is actually doing it. He's collecting some magma, okay, okay, I actually wanna see this. Does it? Oh man. <laughs> So it's very unlikely that right at this spot they're going to drop it. It's unlikely. I'm not saying it's never gonna happen, but there we go. Okay, now I wonder. 
of course, the ladder gave off a little bit of chill, but I don't think it's going to be too bad, you know, once we have this filled up. This, by the way, needs to be two in height, otherwise you're never going to fill it up, because the magma can only flow ten blocks. Uh, okay, I made a little mistake here. Oh, please don't tell me something. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, we have a little bit of steam here. Oh, you're killing me, game. If we're lucky, we can actually mop this up before anything bad happens. Hold on, I didn't mean to put the yellow alert. Just, you know, high priority. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, <laughs> nothing happened. And look at this. Just because we have a vacuum here, this upper ladder isn't even bothered by the fact that its neighboring ladder is 1500 degrees hot. <gasps> it actually happened. Look at this. This is exactly the spot where I actually had my stuff. Oh man, I don't believe that. Now, I wonder, at this point, it shouldn't have an influence, right? Because it, it cannot translate the heat to the ladder without any medium, such as liquid or gases. However, I think it would share the heat with the materials. Okay, let's finally get started with the hydrogen. This room should be filled up and also this room should be filled up. Though, uh, hold on, I haven't closed this off quite yet. Uh, somebody, okay, uh, can you do it? Can you do it? Sweet, filling up both turbine rooms with hydrogen. I'm also going to introduce the cooling loop as soon as we have our aqua tuners in place. And I'm actually going to do that off camera. You already saw how I'm going to do it. I'm just going to hook up this pipe here. And then probably once we have enough water in the joint, I'm going to remove this pipe again. Now, I still need to be careful. I don't want to fill it up completely because in the beginning, it's going to bypass every aqua tuner and therefore it will have more space for packets of water. And then if we run the loop through the aqua tuners, it's not going to have enough space and then it's going to be jerky. So I want to pay attention to that. But there we go. This seems to be working phenomenally. Of course, this is going to take me another 100 turns to actually fill up. <laughs> but man, I'm happy and that's uh, probably what counts. And we are back. I actually realized something. I should heed my own warning. The lava can only flow 10 blocks and it was just impossible to do that with only two tiles. So I decided to revamp the system a little bit and we are going to pump in the lava instead. So I have this pipe going all the way down to here. The liquid pump can reach the tile that is below it. And since we still have a vacuum going on here, I can open this up. And if we count, we have 10 blocks right here. So the lava should flow right into that tile. Being picked up by the pump at the moment, there's no way for me to cool it down. So maybe I'm just going to deconstruct it and reconstruct another one. Uh, we only really need it in order to fill up the initial pool. So I'm using Wolframite liquid vents in order to prevent them from actually melting down. And of course, all the piping needs to be ceramic. This is the only thing that it just holds out the temperature. You know, I'm never sure. I always tend to call it lava as soon as I dug it out. But technically, since we're still underground, uh, it might be magma. <laughs> I'm just gonna do that, but the temperature is 1581 degrees, so we shouldn't have any issues with the ceramic pipes. I also finally closed off the loop and I added uh, with a bottle emptier a little thin layer of petroleum. I did the same thing here on the top using a bottle emptier right here and then I closed it off. So now we should have an almost perfect distribution of the heat and hopefully also a lot of control over the system. Oh no, I just realized that I still have to enable... Ah, darn it. <laughs> but man, there are so many things that can go wrong. I think we can already start pumping the magma. Let's do it. So I want to open up this spot and I probably need to dig this one as well. And I want to make sure that this tile here is intact because that's why we will get the 10 tiles. Oh, of course, before I forget, I also filled up the cooling loop and I left a little bit of space free. Unfortunately, just two pipes. It might not be enough. <laughs> we will see once we enable the contraption, but at the moment, they're all bypassing the aqua tuners. Ah, there we go. Finally, someone is taking care of that. Uh, now, is that going to be a problem? We are already pretty hot at the moment, but I think the petroleum is going to give us a little bit of time. Ah, look, that's very interesting. So I was wondering about that. The granite tile here is not heating up. It is cooling down, rather. So even though it looks like it, the magma is not technically touching it. It is, however, heating up the items that are on the floor. Okay, so not in liquid, but we should be able to pump this out. Darn it. <laughs> All right, here goes nothing. Please pump. Oh, <laughs> 
Okay, there we go. I think I figured out a configuration that might actually work. What we have to do is there has to be a liquid actually overlapping with the pipe and then it's going to pump out as indicated. However, the liquid touching the pump cannot be the magma, obviously, so I decided to go with just a tiny little bit of petroleum that is touching the pump, then it's going to pump that out, uh, going into a sensor, an element sensor. If it detects the petroleum, it's gonna drop it back down, and if it's not petroleum, it should continue. So let's check if that works with just the petroleum. Ah, there we go. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Okay, safe, safe, safe. It is time to deconstruct this bad boy. Let's actually uh, disable the pump for a little bit. This should all be okay. So if we remove this, the pump shouldn't be affected. We are pumping lava. Oh my gosh, I don't believe it. <gasps> oh, I'm so glad I actually stuck to this plan. I almost gave up. <laughs> 72 and right here it's uh, 67 so a couple of degrees lost yes that's what i wanted to see filling up this room entirely oh my gosh this is a good feeling well it is still going to take a while however let's check out the pump here we are you know getting hotter and hotter obviously so we will have to see how that exactly turns out we might just have to rebuild the pump a couple of times yeah, it's about time we go into space. We need space materials now. Still, technically, this is only a temporary setup in order to fill up my magma room. Okay, now one more thing I would like to do is add a little bit of water to this room and the room at the bottom. And I'm gonna do about 10 kilograms per tile. Since we have a layer of petroleum, it's just the tile on the top, which is 36 in length. No, 35. So that means 35 packets I want to get into this room uh, as close as possible. I added 6 pockets thus far and because our metal tiles were already hot, we have immediate steam and therefore my steam turbines are going for it. The sensors, once again, I set to 190 degrees, so if we are above that, the doors are gonna open. But at the moment it looks as though we can take the heat and the water is also cycling back. So let me add the rest of the water, 29 more packets. How is my pump doing? We are at 145 degrees. Okay. <laughs> you know, it was a huge time investment, but after we are done with this, this is just gonna produce free power for us for a long time, that is for sure. So I guess one aqua tuner we can enable, but before we do that, we should also add some water to it. So let's go ahead and connect this. And well, I guess I'm gonna also add some more water to the top room. In this room, we want to fill 20 tiles with 10 kilograms. There we go. We have the water in the room. Let's go ahead and enable this aqua tuner. Nice. Until we have it fully running, I'm just going to use one aqua tuner. After that, we're going to enable all three of them. All right, guys, we are back and I think I'm ready to show you the final design. I can't tell you how many times I reloaded the save game, especially with this contraption right here. I ended up with the petroleum inside of the magma so many times, then sour gas all over the place. It was a freaking disaster. So what I had to do to keep things cool is a simple water loop, and I'm just using the waste oil and petroleum slash water in order to keep this loop cool. So that's the only thing I'm doing right here, and that's where I got the water from. And this is actually allowing me to constantly pump the magma out without the liquid pump ever overheating. Now, of course, the way we set this up with the pipes, we have the most magma on the left side. So these doors at the moment cannot be accessed just yet by the magma. Also, every now and then when the magma is too cold, it actually drops down in igneous rock form. Soon enough, I will have to dig up all of that stuff in order to make sure we have more access to lava and then eventually I'm gonna have to move that contraption down. But it is definitely working. A long procedure, I would say. Let's actually see what's happening up here. Are you really trapped? No? Um, there you go, buddy. Well done. While I was waiting, I actually took myself the liberty to dig out more of the upstairs. And I actually have a master plan for the entire base. I'm probably gonna revamp the base so it is a little bit more modular. I don't need everything together and I would like my duplicants to be in a Atmos suit most of the time. I also would like to reshape this area so instead of an ice box it becomes a steam room 
And since I had so much spare time, I also tapped into the natural gas geyser. I simply added a steel pump. This is getting a little bit over 150 degrees together with the pump, so I just wanted to make sure. We also have an Atmos sensor, so it's not always active, and the Atmos sensor is set to 2000 grams. The natural gas is then coming out here at 150 degrees. We just send it through this pool of polluted water and it can continue on. Right here you can already see it is joining my natural gas line at this point. And then of course right here feeding my generators which are doing a awesome job. Oh! Oh no 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 no, that's not good. Hydrogen is backing up. Oh man, I'm glad I saw that. Uh, why? Ooh! Oh man, that is a huge mistake. Of course, this needs to be done. All hooked up. There we go. Okay, finally using up some of my petroleum again. Jeez. Ah, okay, I see the problem. At the moment, we send in so little liquid that it solidifies instantly. So I think what we have to do for a certain amount of time is just to reverse that so all the doors are going to open. Something like that. And now we are gonna wait until we have these tiles full with liquid as well. <sighs> you see, there's just so... Man, this is incredible. But I'm actually really happy I did that. We can also in the future expand it with a couple more steam turbines. I'm probably gonna take this apart when we do that. So we can have at least like uh, five more steam turbines in this area. But yeah, I guess with that out of the way, we're gonna wrap it up for today. Holy cow. In the next episode, we're going to take care of our space adventures. What I would like to do is scan the skies for potential asteroids to go to. And we might already want to get started with a rocket silo. That is the plan for the next episode. But with that out of the way, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you soon. Bye-bye.